Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode on Altering Magic the Gathering Cards. Today we are doing a Detention Sphere. Uh, I've added something new to this episode for the first time. I've added a difficulty level. I'm giving this one a 3 out of 10. Uh, it's pretty easy. As per usual, we've got our um, brushes lying around. We've got some paints lying around. This is our color palette for today. Well, I kind of forgot to add in a little bit of uh, this um, uh, marine green that we got. Anyways, why is this attention sphere so easy to do? It is mostly one color and um, mostly blue actually and all the textures and stuff they're kind of kind of easy to accomplish so uh, first of all let's get started with our sandpaper just the usual um, just sanding down these uh, these borders on the side because today we're just doing a border extension we're not doing a full art just the borders so just gonna sand down all these edges um, until uh, until it's like a little bit rough that means the paint's gonna stick a little bit better onto the card which means we don't have to worry too much about layering layering on layering too much give it a quick little wipe to get all the dust off that came off the sanding and then we are about to uh, about to get going here so uh, taking this flat brush to start off with uh, it's kind of old but it's okay um, and we're just gonna be putting on our very first layer just as a background color. Here's the green I was talking about that I forgot to put on my palette. Um, so we're just grabbing some blues and some of that green. Uh, a little bit of black, I believe, to darken it up a little bit. Uh, and we're now trying to match the color 100% right on the first go, as long as it's close enough. Put a little bit onto the card to see how that matches up. Kind of looks all right. So as for a first try, it's pretty good. Now you can see the paint that I'm putting on is a little bit transparent so the border underneath shines through uh, that's why it's okay to not uh, have the color matched a hundred percent right on the first go because we're gonna have to put on separate layers or several layers uh, on top of one another anyway to completely um, cover up this border without anything shining through underneath so here I'm just tapping in this color and we're going to be doing this all the way around the card. It's mostly just the one color. There's a couple of uh, variations in it with like some parts are a little bit more blue. Some parts are a little bit more green. Some might be a little bit more light. Some might be a little bit more dark. But overall, um, the colors on this card, uh, on the original art, is uh, is fairly similar. So that that's, uh, that's easy for us. You can see me tapping in the color. Um, every now and then I leave a little part of it to dry and acrylic paint dries pretty quickly it only takes like a minute so that when you leave it for a minute and you go over the top again um, it'll um, it'll stick to the paint that's underneath as a separate layer which means that we get rid of that transparency we were talking about earlier here I'm just adding in a little bit of black and a little bit more uh, green I believe to make the color a little bit darker for this corner uh, obviously in the tension sphere there's a sphere in the middle that emits the light so it's very bright on the original art where the sphere is but as it goes outward the light gets fainter and fainter so kind of darker and darker so that means that what we're doing here on the borders on the edges is pretty much the darkest color we're mixing up on the uh, on the entire card so um, yeah you get that gradient feel where um, it's bright in the middle of the card and then it's supposed to get darker and darker the further out we go so every now and then I add a touch of black to darken it up a little bit I'm just adding layer after layer to make sure none of that old border is shining through. Now we're going to move on to this top here. Um, now the top, the very very top, is a little bit closer to the sphere of light than anything else is. So I'm actually going to brighten up our color a little bit with just a little bit of white and a little bit more of that green and a little bit of blue. Um, just to give the illusion that, um, that it's a little bit lighter out there from that sphere that's a little bit closer to that top part of the card. A little bit more white even. And I just put in a little bit of a hint of where the pillars are going to be, um, just so I know um, 
where I need to come back later to actually put the pillars in. Now the thing is with lighter colors, um, they're a little bit more transparent than darker ones, so it takes a couple more layers to cover up the entire uh, the entire border. So um, I'm going back and forth between the lighter colors to um, leaving it a little bit of, of you know a couple seconds to dry, and then going on top with another layer. And I've dropped in a couple of hints of where these pillars are going to be. We're going to be touching them up later and match the color a little bit more accurately uh, later on. This is just for my own, um, you know, um, like a like a sketch almost of where these need to be. So this dark corner is way more green than it is blue. So I added in a little bit more uh, green and a little bit of black as well. It's quite dark in there. Um, but you can see on the card how it's like a gradient from more blue hue to a little bit more of a dark green hue. So that's what I'm using for this left side of the card. And the good thing about this detention sphere is that the only thing we're painting is basically walls. And they all have the same texture, so we're not like putting in... For this one in, in particular, it's very light on detail, which makes it easy for us to actually um, alter this card. And uh, once again, getting darker and darker towards the bottom, because the further away you get from that sphere, which is in the middle, the less light should strike... Um, the floor or the walls and um, yeah that's what's happening here so the further I go towards the bottom of the card the darker I want it to get and I'm just trying to get some in between colors going on between what I laid on earlier and the bottom so it's more like a gradient and honestly this is also why I think this card is so easy if I were to leave the sides as they are now, it actually looks all right to me. Like it doesn't actually need that much detail in the sides to make it look legit, uh, which it makes the tension sphere actually a really good card if you're just starting out making altars. I know it's a couple bucks worth and, you know, uh, as a practice, it might not be to maybe start off with basic lands like stuff that's like relatively cheap. But if you don't mind giving this one a try, say you've done a couple already and you're looking to do something a little bit more of value, then uh, Detention Sphere is a really good card to start out with. It's a very, very easy one to alter. So now we've got our base layers on. Uh, I'm grabbing this flat brush. It's quite new. Um, it's still like sharp when I um, when I put paint on which is nice and we're just mixing up this light color I put in a little bit of water on the brush first too to make the paint a little bit more liquid which means it's gonna stick a little bit better on the on the card that's on the, or the paint that's underneath and we're just grabbing this highlight color of this pillar and just with a very chiseled um, edge of the brush vertical strokes lay in these pillars or at least the highlights on these pillars now pillars have a couple of sides, so right now we're just doing the highlight side. Then there's this mid-tone side, and then as the light strikes that pillar, they leave behind a shadow on the other side as well. So there's like three sides to this pillar, even though you can only see two. Um, we, we need to. Uh, I always like to pretend there's three sides to them. So a highlight, a mid-tone, and then the shadow that's behind them. Going into a little bit more of a blue mid-tone. Um, to, to get this um, um, side of the pole that doesn't get light directly, but it's still visible. And we do that to all of them. They might differ a little bit, like some are a little bit darker. If you go further away from the sphere, they're a little bit darker. Um, and from my experience, details like these, they always take a couple of tries, because once you put in the highlight and then you go in with your mid-tone, you might cover up a little bit too much of the highlight, so one side looks a little bit too thin. Um, so you might need to bounce back between the highlights and the mid-tones to get the proportions right. But um, overall, they're just, just vertical strokes and quite easy to do. They don't require that much detail. Here I'm grabbing a little bit of a um, slightly lighter 
mid-tone blue. And I just thought it would be cool to drop in a little bit of a hint of some architecture stuff um, on this top part. As if it's more like, um, how to call it? It's like, like an archway or something like that. Just a couple of hints of some bricks and some um, some uh, variation in those um, in that wall. Now this is kind of optional. I just thought it would be would be kind of cool. But if you would just like pull a flat color all the way from the sphere upward, uh, it would look alright too. This is just like my own little touch on, on the thing. Here I'm grabbing a very light blue and I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of a hint of a glow that's coming up from this sphere that's rising up. As you can see in the original art, it's kind of sweeping towards the right away from the character that's in it. So I'm kind of, um, I've got my brush at the same angle and I'm pulling the paint towards the right to get this glowy effect. Um, the center of the glow is going to be a little bit brighter, so we're just dropping in one color at a time. This is kind of like a flat blue, uh, but then we go in with a little bit more white, and then we start at the center. This is what's happening right now, and that's what's going to be our glow. Uh, the paint's quite liquid as well. I added in quite a bit of water. Uh, the thing is, if we're trying to get gradients, uh, it's easier to get gradients with a very wet paint as it kind of blends with the paint that's already underneath. Um, whereas if you were to do it with just dry paint, it just kind of looks like a blob of light. Here I got some uh, a shadowy color. Basically, I'm basically mixing up the same old color, but just with a little bit more black in it, um, and maybe a little bit more blue. And what I'm doing is I'm dropping in what I mentioned earlier about the third side of these pillars. You can't actually see them, but they leave behind a shadow. There's some kind of like depth in there. Um, so I'm putting in the tiniest touch of this black and then every now and then I pull a little bit of a horizontal stroke to pull the paint away from the pillar and that's what creates the gradient um, that makes it look like a shadow being cast on the wall that's behind that pillar. Just little uh, vertical strokes and then a couple of like horizontal pulls. Darkening up these corners a little bit to get that um, glowy radial gradient effect. Here another shadow um, on this pillar on the side. Some very light vertical strokes um, and then a couple of horizontal pulls to get the, the, the to pull the shadow away from the from the pillar, make it look like it's actually being cast on the wall. I'm just going to drop in a couple of these shadows here too where this vertical wall is rising up. Sets it apart a little bit more. Now this is the part where we're adding in a little bit more detail than, than kind of needed. As I mentioned earlier, if you just like have a flat color on the sides, it still looks all, all good. Uh, but I like putting in these little details to make it come alive a little bit more. They're kind of optional. Same here on the other side. It's kind of this... This side's a little bit darker. I think I'm experimenting a little bit with like, oh, maybe there should be some cracks in the wall or something. But I think I um, I turned those back to normal later because I wasn't too happy with it. It's like what Bob Ross always says, like happy little accident. If you don't like something, you can just paint straight over it and make it disappear again. Here I'm just fiddling with uh, the gradient of this wall getting darker and darker towards the outside. Um, trying to find a balance between it standing out, making it look like it's it's rising up and catching a little bit more light, separating it from the floor. Um, it's a little bit tricky to get, but as I said earlier, it's kind of kind of like an optional detail. Here I'm just highlighting just a tiny bit of this top of this first little 
ridge thingy that's on this wall and that makes it fully stand apart gives it a little bit more depth very light horizontal strokes still using that same flat brush always making sure that this brush is like fully sharp and chiseled uh, I never really want this to be fluffy and blobby I want it to be sharp because we're painting walls they're quite straight and they're you know they're um, they've been built precisely so we want our brush to be very sharp and precise as well here I'm layering just a couple of hints of some um, like uh, I wouldn't say sphere like but like circular um, patterns on the floor just kind of like um, like they have in the original art as well just underneath that sphere the same as we did before on the right side we're just dropping in a little bit of this um, these different colors to separate the wall from the floor on the other side uh, this one's a little bit trickier I find uh, it's a little bit more green than it is blue uh, it's a little bit darker um, because the character stand there is casting a shadow on the floor um, so it's a little bit more variations in the color it takes a little bit more work Here I'm, um, same thing of this wall that's, um, that's basically part of, I don't know, it's got like two parts to it, like the lower, where the pillars sit on. Um, that's what I just laid in with just a little lighter touch, a tiny bit of a highlight. It's still quite dark, but even amongst shadowy tones, you can still have highlights and shadows amongst themselves. So, um, yeah, just trying to match the light that's already hinted at uh, from the original art here we got a shadow color again just layer in a couple of these shadowy tones in a vertical stroke to indicate the shadow and then a couple of horizontal pulls to pull a little bit of paint away from that pillar and that's what gets the the, the short but sweet gradient that kind of looks like a shadow Sometimes I overdo it a little bit and then as in, like right now I got to go back with our mid-tones again to erase some of this shadow that I overdid a little bit. Um, it can be a little bit of fiddling. Patience is so key doing this. It's very, um, yeah, it can be a little bit tedious at times. But that's a good thing with paint. If something doesn't really work right, you just go over it with some more until it looks right. Grabbing some very dark shadowy colors to just indicate some like stones and bricks down here at the bottom. I'm not quite sure in hindsight whether the um, like these stones that I'm painting right now are quite, um, they look like they've been crumbling a little bit. I'm not sure if that was the right choice, but either way, um, color wise, they, they, they're on point. So it, it looks all right anyways. Uh, I switched brushes to this very tiny brush it's the sharpest one I have, the smallest one I have for now. Um, and we're going straight into this white. I basically use this brush for the very final touches, like the, the, the final highlights, the final details. Uh, because it's so thin and so small, um, 
it's perfect for just like tiny little details here and there. Making sure that this brush too, always very chiseled and sharp. As of right now, I'm putting in just a tiny bit of highlight on these uh, stones at the bottom. Basically just at the very top because that's where the light is shining from, from that sphere. Um, and just a very sharp edge because a sharp highlight, a very thin highlight, indicates a very bright light. Going in with a little bit more of a blue color to give it just a little bit more of um, the same blue tone that's on the rest of the card. Because it was quite dark before. And that's about it. Painting's done, so um, now we're just gonna grab our skewer and all these parts of uh, the border that we've covered or the text box that we covered that we didn't actually want to cover. Um, just make the skewer a little bit wet and um, scrape off any excess paint. This is my least favorite part of doing alters. It's so tedious sometimes, but um, takes patience and it has to be done unfortunately and we do this all around um, the title box and then at the text box below as well just gonna speed it up a little bit now sometimes you scrape off a little bit too much so always keep your brushes handy like don't leave this for another day or something do it on on you know straight after you finish painting your altar because sometimes you scrape off too much and then you have to go back and fix what you've scraped off um, and it's really good to just have your colors and your brushes still lying around so you still know you know you're still in the flow of mixing the colors you still have them lying around in your palette somewhere to match it up um, so I would recommend not leaving this for another day every now and then if I make the card a little bit too wet like there's too much um, water or moisture dripping from the from the from the skewer I just grab a little bit of paper towel dab it off and then it's all good. And that's pretty much our card. Now all that's left to do is uh, is sign it, and my maybe a tweak here and there. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, but at the top left corner, the paint didn't really want to come off that easy, so I had to go back a couple times. But that's pretty much our detention sphere for today. So for now, I'm just going to sign this bad boy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a like if, uh, if you learned something new about making these. Next up is probably going to be either a Wrath of God or a Swan Song. Um, yeah, if you uh, want to see that one too, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. See you soon.